So welcome everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today on our How to Win Awards webinar. Um, we're going to be hearing from Donna O'Toole and um, she's from August, the founder and, and uh, managing director of the Global Awards Agency. Um, and she's going to be telling us some really hot tips on how to differentiate your entry uh, and why enter awards. Um, before um, we, I pass you over to Donna, I'll just let you know that um, we do have some sponsors uh, sponsor judges and some previous winners um due online with us today so um if we've got time for some q a later they may well be able to um answer some questions as well and, and engage at that point so with no further ado from me i'm going to pass you over to donna thank you very much donna thanks sally hi everybody thanks for joining us today um and hello to those of you i've met and i know and hello to newbies who i don't know yet but would love to get to know um uh we do this webinar every year and it's always really lovely and uh really helps people get on their way to entering so uh throughout as i talk today please do don't be afraid to ask questions i'll answer them at the end just because it's a bit easier to keep in the flow and and then catch up with you all off the shared screen at the end um so make a note as we go through and we can go from there. Please excuse me, I've got a bit of a sore throat and a cold at the moment, a bit like everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, if I'm a little bit croaky. So anyway, so we're here to win awards. So just a quick introduction, who am I? Why am I in a good place to talk to you about awards and what can I share with you? What insights can you expect from me? Um, so we are thought leaders in the awards industry. We are very experienced uh, working with both awards organizations like Gatwick Diamond um, and national and international organizations, as well as working with clients and entrants. So we know both, both sides of the table. Um, and I do a lot of awards judging um, around the world and I've been recognized for my contribution to that. So hopefully I can give you some secrets uh, that will help take you forward. Um, I've just launched a new book called Win. And at the end of this, I'll show you how you can get a free copy as well. So do hang on to the end and then you'll be able to get that. And if you want to listen to any award winning stories, you can listen to my podcast if you would like to as well. So today then, uh, first of all, what's your uh, awards goals? So this is our agenda for today. We're going to talk about finding your unique selling point for awards. Uh, we're going to talk about the six pillars of award success, which is our unique methodology, which actually helps you to identify what your unique selling point is, um, and then take you on to the secret to winning awards and find out if you're ready to win, and then take you on to your next step so that you can discover your award winning score as well to help you to self analyze and self evaluate where you are now and what kind of awards and categories for the Gatwick Diamond uh, Awards would be good for you. So first of all, then, why even win awards? Like, why are we here? Awards are hard work. I hear from people all the time. I don't have time to put the entry together or I don't know what evidence to get or I don't know. Really, I'm trying. I'm so busy doing everything else. How am I going to do it? So why is it really worth it? Well, awards are more than ever, actually, even since the pandemic now, more than ever um, important for the trust and credibility of your business, of your brand, of your um, activities and what you're doing. It's a bit like... Um, that bottle of wine analogy. If you go into a, a store and you see a bottle of wine with an award on it, you're far more likely to buy that one than you are one without. And actually, did you know that even the same bottles of wine, but if one's got a badge on it and one hasn't, everyone thinks the one with the badge on it tastes better when they physically taste it. So you can see the psychology around awards can make a real difference to how people feel about the products uh, that you're delivering as well. So what I want you to think about now is what are your goals for 2023 um, and how could awards help you to achieve those goals essentially so there, here's some example goals that we hear all the time so goals to grow your revenue who doesn't want to grow um, and to get more customers and how can awards help you to get to those goals um, awards can also support you to strengthen your relationships so if you think if you're a b2b business so you're servicing other businesses with their needs how could you use awards to strengthen that relationship, really bond you together, really cut out any competition of coming along to get that other contract, that contract from you and take you both forward and actually entering awards sometimes in partnership or using your client as a case study and getting them on board with your award entry can really, really support you in that business to business relationship. And it adds value to the contract that you're giving them over and above what they could be getting from someone else. 
Um, awards can support you to get finance and investment. So I've worked with lots of clients who've struggled to get finance and investment until they've won an award. And then all of a sudden it's all being offered to them. So you will notice that um, in many awards competitions, there's also financial institutions involved. And that's because financial institutions take seriously uh, you winning awards. And that goes towards what they call your brand value. So if they think you've got a valuable brand, then you're far more worth giving finance to lending and investing with. Um, awards can help you to recruit, reward and retain your people. So really, really important for recognition and motivation of employees, but can also be really good in a local recruitment drive. So if you're thinking, well, I could, you know, actually we do need to recruit and actually we're in the Gatwick Diamond area. Well, what, what better than to look for and to, to strengthen your profile by winning awards um, in the Gatwick Diamond area itself. Um, awards can also help you to expand and export your business. So if you're thinking, well, actually, we want to get into a new region or a new territory, or we're already in a new region or territory, but we need to raise our profile there, then awards can support you to do that, give you great PR opportunities and to build your brand. And this last one is really about thinking, well, what do I want my brand to be known for? What do I want my reputation and our brand reputation to be? Because you are who Google says you are. So if you're winning an award that says that you're uh, innovative, you're the best company to work for, or you're a uh, growing brand, then that's out there in the world. It's on things like the Gatwick Diamond website, it's on uh, improving your SEO, and it helps to secure the brand reputation that you want to create. So I wanted to tell you a little story about a business that we worked with. So, and this is to help you to think about finding your awards unique selling point. And people always think, what is that? What is this mad woman talking about? Uh, I know what my selling point is. That's how I sell my products and my business. But actually your selling point for awards can be slightly different in the way that you tell it. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you a story about this company. And, and I want you to think while I'm talking about it, if and how it could resonate with your company and what you're doing. So this is uh, a company called Close Brothers uh, Retail Finance, and they were a company that was set up out of the Close Brothers Merchant Bank, which you may already know, um, to um, provide retail finance to retailers. And they're, they're full stories in my book, actually. Um, and essentially what happened is they wanted to raise their profile and they wanted they were competing against big players um, in the marketplace. And what they did is they provided financial support to businesses so that those businesses could then go and offer, retailers could go and offer things like 0% interest free credit deals, that kind of thing. So, you know, if you want to buy a sofa tomorrow or a washing machine, but you don't want to pay for it right now, you want to spread your payments, that's the, they were the people providing the money uh, to the retailers so they could provide that option to us, the customers. But when we first came together and they wanted to raise their profile, they said, hey, Donna, can you help us raise our profile? There's all these bigger players than us. Um, I said, yeah, great. What do you think you can win awards for? What are you doing well? And they said, well, we've got this great technology. And actually what it means is that we can send our money down the line to the uh, custom, the retailer within four seconds of a customer signing on the contract for their interest free payment deal. So I said, okay, well, that's nice, but it's not really going to make an impact on anybody. And you're probably not going to win awards for it. If it's unique technology that's never been used for before, then maybe you could use win some tech awards. Um, chances are it has been done before by other businesses. So what's your unique selling point? What's actually making you different as a business provider than your, com than your competitors? And how are you going to stand out and demonstrate your impact and your unique selling point? And they, they didn't really know. So we said, right, okay, let's have a think about your customers. Instead of what you're providing and what you're doing, think about the customers on the other end. So I said, give me an example of a customer. And they said, well, actually, we've got some small businesses now we're working with. And one of them, and this is a true customer, um, was a guy called Nigel. And he had a shop that sold washing machines and fridges and freezers, that kind of a white goods shop in around Essex, I think it was. And um, they said, so... What happened was um, people would go into his shop. We've all done this, right? Go into his shop, open the washing machines, open the fridges, press the buttons, have a play with everything, and then say, oh, great, Nigel, can I buy this one, this model? Um, but I, don't, I can't afford to pay for it right now. Can I get interest-free credit? And he'd say, well, no, sorry, I'm, I, don't, I don't have that. I, like, I'm only a small business. So what did they do? They got on their phone, they Googled the model, and they found it in John Lewis or Curry's or somewhere else, and off they went. And he was losing business by the day. 
And so they came along and said, no, we'll, we'll give you the money. We'll back you. These their competitors were not backing the smaller businesses at that time. So this became their unique selling point. So actually what they did and what we did is we changed and shifted their whole marketing uh, to becoming, instead of being about, oh, we can send money down the line really quickly, look at our technology, to we're supporting entrepreneurs to grow their businesses. We're supporting entrepreneurs to achieve their dreams. We are saving the Great British High Street because these entrepreneurs are now not shutting down because they can offer the same payment facilities as the huge brands that they're competing against to sell the same thing, the same products. And as a result of that, what happened to Nigel was they taught him how to get it on his website that he offered interest-free credit. His business grew and grew. And with before, within I think about a year it was of having that credit, he had another shop. So he doubled the size of his business. Now, when we then looked at how many small businesses they were supporting, and we then looked at the, the growth that each of those businesses were having, this was a huge story about supporting entrepreneurs to grow. OK, but they had come at it thinking that their awards USP was their technology. It wasn't. It was the service they were providing to change entrepreneurs lives. Now, as a result of that award story, um, we, we ran that uh, through lots of different awards, um, supported them to enter lots of different awards over a couple of years. Their profile raised so high so quickly that they attracted the attention of Klarna, who then bought them. Um, and Alex here in the centre, this is the team. And Alex is now the head of Plano UK, who was the head of Close Brothers Retail Finance. So not only did it make a huge impact on their customer, what they were doing, made a huge impact on their reputation and it blew their profile sky high. So that just shows you what understanding your real true impact on your customer can do and the difference it can make when you're actually trying to enter awards and grow your profile um, when you can take a step back and look at the impact you're having in a different way. So I tell you that story because I want you to take a step back from what you're doing and think about what your unique selling point could be when you're thinking about entering the Gatwick Diamond Business Awards as well and how you're going to portray that and get that across to the judges. So another thing that I want you to do is to think about running in the right race. Now, there's two of these two guys here, very popular, are uh, Usain Bolt and Sir Mo Farah. Um, they have a lot in common, obviously. They're both incredible runners. Now, if they were entering the same competition and that competition was the best runner in the world award, which one of them do you think would win? Is there an obvious winner to you? I'll let you have a think about it. I'll have a drink of water. If I tell you that Usain Bolt's average speed is 27 miles per hour and Mo Farah's average speed is 17 miles per hour, does that help you to understand who would win in the best runner in the world competition? No, Sally's shaking her head. No, it doesn't. Because the point of this is actually they're both great runners. Um, Mo, uh, Usain Bolt is the fastest man in the world up to 200 metres. Mo Farah then takes over because he's a long distance runner. Usain Bolt is a sprinter. The point is they don't compete against each other because they know what their strengths are. And this is what I want you to think about when you start looking at your awards categories. OK, what are your actual strengths and how can you really showcase them and make sure you shine by getting in the right race? So if you're a great manufacturing business, the, the great thing is, actually, I will say, Sally, you've got lots of great categories here. So there's lots of opportunity to really refine your choice here as well. So if you know you're doing great things for employees, we've got employer of the year, um, you can actually- Can I just say, Donna, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, that, um, that list isn't from this year. So although a lot of those categories are current for this year- Oh, isn't it? Some, some of those aren't running. Oh, okay. So it's been updated. So yeah, check the website updated. before yeah. you do. But anyway, as you can see, there will be a lot of selection of categories. Um, and uh, it's important to understand what your strengths are so that you can look at the right categories for you. And then we can look at the six pillars of award success, okay? Now, this is something that we work on, and this is something that you can actually go and assess yourself against at the end. I'll give you a link to do that. Now, these are from years and years and years of experience with awards. Um, key areas, no matter what categories you go for, these are key, key areas of your business and your story to understand and to look at your strengths in, to see where you stand out and to see actually if you if it's an area that you perhaps haven't thought about bringing into your award story. So we have impact, influence, inspire, innovate, 
insight and improve. And I'm just going to quickly take you through what each of those actually means. So, um, and when we, we find that the more, essentially the more of these pillars you can kind of tick off, the stronger your story becomes. So inspire, who inspired you? What did they inspire you to do? And who have you inspired? Now that works for you, whether you're an entrepreneur and you're running your own business, or perhaps you're part of a team, or you want to nominate um, someone else or a leader in your business. So why are they inspirational? Or how have you been inspirational? It's quite hard to think about sometimes. Um, I give you lots of examples in my book about that one, actually. Um, impact. Impact is hugely important. That was what the Close Brothers story was about. It was about thinking about where your impact is actually the strongest and how you can tell that. So are you having an impact on your customers and what is it? Are you having an impact on your community somehow? Because sometimes, you know, you might be doing going over and above what you're doing for customers in the community as well. Are you having an impact on colleagues in some way and making life better for them in some way? And then your influence as well. And this is a bit like your reputation. How are you as a business being a thought leader? How are you influencing others? Are you being decision makers? Are you helping um, in some way to make a difference in your industry or in your community from an influential point of view? Um, even awards can demonstrate that you've been influential. Are you involved in speaker events or podcasts? So perhaps looking at if you're on a more personal journey for awards, that could be really helpful for you. Insights is probably one of the most important parts of a business award entry and yet one of the parts that's most often forgotten. Um, insights means um, letting the judges understand why you're doing what you're doing. What's the thinking behind it? What problem are you trying to solve? So if it's your own business, why did you start the business? What are you trying to overcome? Or if it's some perhaps um, a customer um initiative that you've got what are the customer insights that led you to make the change to make that happen um, have you got testimonials or case studies or market research or anything that proves what those insights are sometimes it's really easy to start from now oh this is where we're at now and this is what we're doing but actually forget to set the scene of the context and the insight behind why you're doing what you're doing and what difference you forecast that can make um, innovate. Now, not everyone is innovating, although everyone wants to think that they're innovating. So I would like to say, take a step back from innovation and be realistic. Are you innovating? And therefore that is doing something new and unique, or are you best practice and actually you're offering something that's really good quality, um, what you're doing, but it's not necessarily new and unique. So think about what innovation means to you in your business and how you can prove it against perhaps your competitors and what they're doing or the rest of the marketplace because not everything is innovative okay and that's fine um so have you got an innovative product have you got an innovative service have you got an innovative business model and actually the model is sometimes what people forget can be innovative um I mean, i've helped businesses to win huge awards like the queen's awards for enterprise just based on their methodology within their business being innovative because actually on the outside, everything looked the same as what everyone else was doing, but on the inside, the way they made it work was really different. So think about what you're doing um, across the business that way. And then lastly, how are you improving things? And this is what you really want to show in your award entry. Are you improving life for your customers in some way? That could be you're making your products or services cheaper, more accessible, easier to manage, more successful than your competitors. Are you improving life in the community somehow for people? Are you uh, supporting charities or are you actually getting in there and doing getting things done? Or perhaps your business is part of the community in some way and makes a difference. Um, and are you improving life for your colleagues? So looking at the people who work for you, how are you a great place to work? What are you doing that's different? How are you supporting them? Particularly when you think what we've all been through over the last uh, you know, a couple of years with the pandemic, have you changed the way that you work to support your colleagues? What are you doing now? We're coming into a, another kind of crisis. You know, what are you doing now to support them? Health and well-being is a big thing nowadays. So these won't all be relevant to all categories, but they're worth thinking about um, when you come into making decisions about where your strengths are um, in order to make decisions about which categories to apply for. And then bringing that together to what we call the secret of winning awards, which is this sweet spot here in the middle, um, is these three core elements for your award entry. And 
if you've entered awards before and you haven't won or you haven't got anywhere or perhaps you've been shortlisted but you haven't quite won you might want to look back on that and and, and reflect through the uh, these eyes and check these three things so what we're generally looking for in awards is the impactful logical story of why you're doing what you're doing and how you're doing it but then also some of your values uh, based story so some emotion in there are judges are human beings we want to engage with your story we want to get behind you we really want to feel passionately that you're making a difference or we really feel like you deserve to win in some way so tell us what what things mean to you as well it's not all just about the facts it's about your why as well and your purpose um, and then bringing those together with evidence so it's, it's great to tell a great story, but we do need to back it up in some way. Um, and the best way of doing that and to check yourself on your evidence is to be able to try and include both qualitative and quantitative evidence. So qualitative evidence is something like case studies, testimonials, feedback, that type of thing. And then quantitative would be measurements. So it might be um, that your customer service scores have gone up, or it might be that your costs have reduced and you've saved time, or it might be productivity has increased, or uh, retention has gone up, or attrition has reduced. So think about whatever your story is, how can you prove it with some kind of data, as well as some qualitative evidence as well. And then also just to say as well that the... Um, I think I think sometimes people underestimate how hard it is to win and to win, actually. And part of the reason for that is because nowadays award entries are getting higher and higher quality. OK, so 80 percent of the award entries that go into competitions can be really, really good. And then the next 10 percent are the ones you're going to find in the shortlist. They're brilliant. And then you want to get to the top of the top 10 percent to be the winner. So you need to um, use the concept of the aggregation of marginal gains. Now, this comes from cycling i've got a whole podcast about this with this lovely man neil fadgie here who's a paralympic uh, cyclist um and he's a he's a brilliant guy and he explains how all of the tiny little changes that you make in your business and the tiny differences that you make and if you explain those in your award entry can help you to just polish and polish and polish and get further and further and further and further up that ladder until you achieve the gold essentially a bit like as i'm sure you've heard the stories of the olympians you know even the type of mattress on that they're sleeping on in the type of bed they're in will make a difference to the quality of sleep which will then make a difference to the quality of performance so think about both your business and your award entry where can you really polish and make those small gains that will eventually help to pip you uh, to the winning post so that kind of brings me to the end of the presentation. And I'm going to leave you with this uh, from Nelson Mandela, which is either you win or you learn. You've got nothing to lose by entering the Gatwick Diamond Business Awards because you will either win something, uh, win an award or you'll learn something about your business and you'll be in a better position to go forward. And I also wanted to give you access to our free tools. So we've, if you go on our website, which is craftedbyaugust.com, um, you'll see we've got on there some awards tools. So this is a test. So the six pillars of award success I told you about earlier, you can go through the, the, it's completely free. You can go through the test. And then what happens is at the end, it takes measurements from your answers. It's been carefully designed. Um, and then it gives you feedback um, on where your strengths are. And so you might, in, in percentages. Now, you will see from that where your strongest areas are for awards and then areas that you can build on. And then you also receive a report that will give you tips on how to build on those weaker areas, what you could be doing and what awards will be looking for and expect from you. And you can also get access to um, a free digital copy of my book through there as well. So please feel free to have a go at that um, and you can enjoy some free resources there as well. Um, and just if you want to uh, connect or communicate with me or follow us, then please do. That's all our social channels. I'm most prolific on LinkedIn, I would say. Um, <laughs> so if you want to, I'm on TikTok now. <laughs> and uh, much to my kids' embarrassment. Um, so, yeah, there we go. So I think I've left enough time for some questions, Sally. So I'll stop Thanks, sharing. Thank you so sharing. much, Donna. I've, I've listened to you a few times over the years and I always get something extra every time I listen to you. <laughs> um, it, you really reinforce sort of the logic behind um, 
what you, what you should do to differentiate differentiate yourself. I love that that close brother story. I think it's a, a really it's lovely, great story. Isn't it? They're yeah, very it really kind is. to have let me share it because I can tell you we've got some amazing stories, but most of them I'm not allowed to tell you. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> but no, that is a fabulous story, and it does make you realise you're not supposed to be talking about what you do. It's the impact you make exactly. to other people. Um, and it, like I say, it seems such a logical thing. When you say it, when you when you um, yeah, you, but when you're uh, in it and you're working in it every day, yeah. day in day out, it's you get stuck in the here and now, don't you? And actually, it's, it's really Absolutely. good for the business. I was doing a workshop actually with a big company yesterday, and just taking everyone take a step back. What do we? What actual impact? And and it is really easy to get lost in that. So I encourage everyone to do it for awards or not. It's just a really good exercise. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the, yeah, the tool that you've got there. It looks fantastic. So, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I would I would encourage people to use that. Um, and I also loved either you win or you learn, because um, oh, definitely. obviously when you've gone to a lot of effort to, to submit an entry or to prepare and submit an entry, it's disappointing for people when they don't win mm. or don't get shortlisted. Um, but I do see people sort of falling at that hurdle and, and sort of giving up. And I just would implore people not to yeah. because like you said the, the standard of entries just gets better and better every also, year yeah I think and I'm sure this is the same but with a lot of the judging that I do uh, I think people really find it hard to believe this but a lot of the difference between a winner and a non-winner is a point mm. <laughs> it's like one point or less than a point sometimes and it you know so it, it's just those aggregation and marginal gains to really mm. push yourself over and up as far as you can Absolutely. So does anybody have, um, so initially, does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask Donna? Clive. Hi, Clive. Hi, Donna. Thank you for the presentation. Very clear and concise. Much appreciated. Uh, I'm a past um, judge for Business Excellence Awards and Investors in People. Um, and coming on to your point about win or learn, uh, one of my learning points was that quite frequently um, those who submitted uh, which is by far a larger number than those who win, uh, do not have the opportunity of getting feedback on how they can further improve their submissions. So my question to you is, should judges' criteria and scores be open to public scrutiny so that people can actually learn next time round? Um, okay, so actually, I think, did you email me, Clive, about this? I did indeed. You did. I'm sorry, I've been off poorly. So that's why you haven't had an answer. I'm glad you're on here. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, there's a couple of points on that. One point is don't forget that awards are part of a PR and marketing industry, and that's not a governed industry. So any anyone can go and set up an award tomorrow and run it however they want to. And it would be very difficult to govern a uh, situation where you say something has to be publicly, uh, you know, uh, published, essentially, unless there was a governing body for that industry. So that's not going to happen. Um, do, should they be publicly released? No, I don't think they should be, because there's a lot of confidential information in there. However, there's a lot of awards that I do do a lot of work with, where actually after the event, the um, runners up and winners, everybody who's entered gets a, a feedback report and they see everybody's scores and their benchmarking and comments from the judges. Now, not every award is set up to do that. It's quite epic on a scale of, you know, the, the, the admin side of it, what to do. So you'll find you'll get that more from the larger awards organisations. Um, Sally, you will have your own uh, set up on how that works. But I, I personally believe, yes, everyone should have the opportunity to learn because it will help you to improve your business at the end of the day to move yeah. your business forward so what what's your take on that sally um yeah we um we do ask our um judges judges and sponsors to provide feedback um so that we can provide it directly to the entrant but it doesn't go out to the other entrants it's it's private and confidential to the entrant so that, that they've got um feedback on, on what they did well and what they could do better um for next time otherwise otherwise it just leaves people wondering well we did that we, we think we did our best where do we go from here and then I can understand why people wouldn't bother entering again perhaps mm. um so it depends yeah, that, on the judging mechanisms as well because every yeah. competition has a slightly different judging mechanism as you'll know Clive yeah. um and so if it's if it's a points only situation and it's independently judged and it's not a group that you know you're going to have different outcomes to if it's a cohort who are making decisions together etc yeah. etc cetera, et cetera. so I think I should become the governing body for <laughs> <laughs> 
and oh, tell you that I was doing really, really, really well. <laughs> but um, that's quite a big job. So, <laughs> so that's probably not going to happen right away. But yeah, I, I, I love it when people can learn from it. And actually, I spend quite a lot of time at award ceremonies going around talking to people and, and explaining to them perhaps why they didn't win and what they could have done and what they could do next time to help them as well. And it is part of our judges criteria that they do provide that feedback for us. Um, obviously, it, at stages through the, the process, because um, we don't get the shortlist until um, February. I think the finalists are announced in February. Um, at that point, we will be collating feedback from those that weren't shortlisted. And obviously, those that make the final three won't get their feedback until after the, um, the announcement of the winners on, on the awards night. Otherwise, um, it might just ruin the surprise. <laughs> but yeah, that we've got a we've got a, a a full list of criteria which we provide now to our judges prior to them signing up or at the point of them signing up, listing out the expectation. Um, and we've also somebody's asked actually, Alex. Um, he's asked if I can move on. So thank you, Clive, for your question. I hope, I hope that's answered you okay. Um, Alex Binks has asked, um, may I ask, will there be visits from the GDB team and award sponsors to visit and evaluate? The business is entering the award. Um, well, the team don't get involved in the judging at all. So all we do is collate the, the responses. So there won't be any visits from us. Um, but the, the judges, um, I think this year we've um, requested that they shortlist um, a minimum of six. Um, so and we're asking them that where possible they are doing face to face visits. Obviously, last year that was that was a, a challenge. So um, that wasn't able to happen. Um, so yes, the, the expectation or the hope will be that the, the shortlisted at minimum of six per category will receive a visit from the judges. If, if that isn't possible, then there will be a, a Zoom call um, type of a, a visit, as it were. Um, is, that, is that okay, Alex? Does that answer? That's actually fine. Uh, th thank you, Sally. Thank you. No problem. And then um, Julia has asked, um, do you roughly have any idea of the number of submissions for each of the awards usually? Um, it really varies um, year on year, actually. Uh, I'm sure you find this as well, Donna. Mm -hmm. um, the categories themselves will attract a different number of, of, of entries. So there are certain categories that are always popular. Professional services firm of the year is always popular. Um, Customer delight is usually quite a popular one. Place to meet historically has been a popular one. Um, and then there, and then another year, you won't get as many entries. Um, so it's very difficult to say. There's no real science to it, I don't think. No, there isn't. But I think, I mean, certainly what I've seen from a trends perspective is that entries have been going up um, over the last few years. And, I, and, and actually, it was funny because people said to me, during the well at the start of the pandemic I thought I might have to go and get a job in Tesco because who was going to go and want to enter awards mm -hmm. by the end by the by within six months we would we'd doubled in size so you know and that was because actually more people well a couple of reasons I think people realized that they needed to give more recognition to their teams mm -hmm. perhaps than they ever had been um uh, and engage with them again and support them and help them and thank them for getting them through what they were getting through um and and saw the difference that made and also we i saw some different trends in the type of businesses that were entering awards as well and actually there's been a lot more involvement in awards now from things like health services uh, emergency services schools so it's actually gone a lot wider than just the traditional kind of commercial uh mm. environment um uh so yeah so i think the trend the trend is up as far as um i've seen and lots of the awards that we've been talking that i've judged for and i've been talking to actually um have had the, every year they say they've had their biggest year and then the next year has been their next biggest year so it does seem to be growing so it's a competitive mm -hmm. place to be <laughs> that's that's really encouraging to hear because um I was talking to the team earlier and um, we were wondering every year you wonder how, how it's going to be. And mm -hmm. um, we were wondering if um, the impact of people were having to, well, they're fairly under resourced and having recruitment issues and that kind of thing mm. might put pressure on people not not having time to to submit yeah, entries. Yeah, it just means so, you'll get them all late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> None of them will come in until the day before at least. So take your laptops, laptop time and stop watching Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> but it does influence as well the, the type of uh, categories as well. So I've really seen changes in categories over the years as well. And a bit of a shift from always being about commercial performance mm -hmm. um, to actually being more um, about other things as well, community impact, things like that. So, you know, there are lots of trends in awards 
that when you're looking at them all the time <laughs> become very obvious yeah and there, there was a few categories from last year that we've not we're not doing now um because they were relevant to what was happening last year yeah. And um, we have introduced um, employee of the year, um, which we're really excited about. We've never done that before. No, and that's really. being um, we only we only announced that actually. Um, what day of the week is it now? Was it on Wednesday? We, we had our alumni lunch and we launched the awards, the start of the process. Um, and um, we were very fortunate to have Sarinda Aurora from the Aurora Group, um, self-made billionaire and fantastic guy um, sitting at our table and, and he, as our keynote speaker. And um, we announced that there were about four categories that we didn't have sponsors for. And if they're not sponsored, they won't run, which is fine. It's just, it is one of those things. But one of them was the employee of the year because it was just a, a thought that, we, you know, wouldn't it be great if? Um, and Syringa said, we'll sponsor that. So wow. um, the Aurora Group are sponsoring that. So that's really exciting. Someone's just asked when um, you'll be able to see the list. They're actually up now on our brand new website that Storm 12 built for us. Um, if you go to GatwickDiamondBusinessAwards.com, you'll be able to see the brand new website. And if you go to the 2023 awards tab, um, there's a list of all the awards categories. And if you click on them, you can download the entry form and you can see who's sponsoring. So I hope that's I hope that helps. Um, I'm not sure if employee of the year is on there yet, in fact, because I'm busy working on the entry form at the moment because we've only just uh, agreed that that's going to happen. So watch out for that one. Yeah. Has Excellent. anyone got any more questions? There's another one in the chat from Will. Oh, sorry, Clive, um, from Alex. And then Clive's got his hand. Oh, OK, yeah. Um, it's going to Will Gatwick Airport be involved in the awards in the coming years? Um, yes, um, they're actually headline sponsors this year. Um, they weren't able to support um, financially last year for obvious reasons. They've yeah. laid a lot of staff off and they had a lot of staff on furl furlough. So reputationally, obviously, um, it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been good um, from an outward perspective. Um, but they are back on board headline sponsoring this year. And we're thrilled to have them this, uh, and their support is just fabulous. And Electra, of course, um, they're also our headline sponsors. Um, and you can see all the category sponsors who we're also grateful to have supporting us again. So, yeah, there's definitely an appetite for it. Um, we just need the entries in now. <laughs> <laughs> and Clive, what, what would you like to ask? Thank you. A question for Sally, if I may. Um, it's to do with uh, advice or guidance you give to the award judges. Um, for example, uh, some judges like to look at uh, independent um, customer feedback on sites like um, Trustpilot uh, or TripAdvisor. Um, uh, and sometimes this can overcome the issue of um, award entrants putting on their own website uh, only the wonderful news. And I wondered <laughs> um, what sort of guidance, Sally, you provided to all the judges to help them look at different data sources for evidence. Thank you. Oh, well, we don't actually train our judges. Okay. <laughs> we don't have a pro we don't have a training process. A lot I need to do one of those as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 Donna, job for you. Um, <laughs> I mean, a lot of our judges have been judging for a long time, so they're they're already um, old hat, if you like, and they they've got a very good process going. And we bring the judges together when all the entries are in, um, so they can sit around the table and receive their entries. And then anyone that's new to the process will go through. Um, best practice with them at that point and there's an opportunity for them to obviously share um, and ask questions of the judges that we've got on board so um, I don't know if that answers your question. I don't think you're also. but Sally you still do site visits don't you or phone calls or, or um, yeah as um, the judges do um, yeah 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 so I think they I think they see what I'm saying Clive is I think they're seeing beyond just the entry form that they yeah, absolutely get. I, and any yeah. experienced judge would look beyond that I certainly would and, yeah. and actually that's that's a bit of advice I give to my clients as well is um can you please make sure all your ducks are in a row because you're saying you're doing this in one thing and then mm -hmm. actually it looks like you're doing something completely different and something else so you know it, for business we need to be doing that um yeah. But yeah, absolutely. Again, you're not really accredited to be a judge. You are you you rely on uh, the the expertise of people's uh, you know running businesses and and being part of general business life to be able to make sensible common sense decisions. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and like you say, Donna, we're not we're not it's not judged on entry form per se. I mean, obviously, that's the the, the door opener. Um, I think we've had very few entries in my time where um, the entrant has been disregarded at that point. Um, very few. Um, and and uh, uh, 
it, it would just be a piece of paper handwritten very very a very poor entry that, that would fall at that hurdle um so yeah I think it's evidencing everything post that so either by a visit or by a phone call um I think the and, and the other thing I think the um in the past we've had we've had so many entries in one category um perhaps 25 28 too many to expect a judge to go and visit when they've got their day job um they have shortlisted on the entry forms um, and that may well happen this year we're trying to make it um easy for entries even e easy for businesses to enter but we're also trying to make it easy for sponsors to agree to sponsor um, by letting them know what's expected from the outset and if somebody agrees to sponsor and they suddenly get 50 entries and we're saying you've got to go and visit them all that would be an unrealistic expectation from our point um so um yeah we're trying to make we're trying to refine the process a little bit to make it a little bit easier so they know from the get-go what the expectation is cool any anyone else got any other questions they'd like to ask i don't think there's anything else in the chat have we got any um sponsors on any sponsored judges who have got experience of judging who might like to share some top tips jane's on but you haven't done it before jane have you emw no no, no. um i'm trying to think who else i've got here i've, I've got all black <laughs> squares that i'm trying to quickly read who everyone is um so I don't think we have. What about um, any anyone that's entered before? We've got any winners on board? We have. Um, I know um, Suzanne um, from Assurity. Um, you have won the Gatwick Done Business Award in the past. Are you able to share any insight? Are you there, Suzanne? And I know Tina from Ashdown Park. You're new to new to the new to Ashdown Park in the big scheme of things, but Ashdown Park have also um, been past winners of awards. Um, is there anyone that wants to share? Suzanne, there you are. So, I'm not <laughs> going to give all my secrets away. <laughs> I, was just say um, that. I think I think um, it would be nice, perhaps, to hear um, how how what difference it made to your business and to your team winning. Not not necessarily <laughs> giving away experience, your, your, what you do to win, but uh, <laughs> how did it, how what difference did it make to your business and to your to your team? I think it, um, from a PR perspective, it's always good to have excuse me I also have the throat um to have um have a message about winning awards whether it's industry awards because we do those as well or you know this type of award um it's always great PR um we um always get customers involved whether it's case studies or testimonials that's absolutely key I think not just to see it from your perspective but from the other side mm -hmm. as well um and from um from an employee perspective I remember I didn't go one year I remember just sitting on Twitter sort of watching it and then there's people coming at me from the company saying oh we found one it's just this, this really positive atmosphere just even on sort of social or messaging or, or whatever it may be so it's really positive and um we've had customers come with us to the awards or we've just had a table of our own employees mm -hmm. and that goes down really well as well and it's not just the customer facing people it's the administrators you know sometimes the finance team as well so it's a really good collaborative um thing that that we can celebrate internally excellent thank you suzanne that was really that was really interesting and really useful and of course there might be people on the on the call that have won awards and not necessarily a gatwick diamond business award but i'm, I'm assuming that you get the same benefits from winning an award in, with it whether it be an industry award or an award from a, a different organization that's running it so if anyone else has got uh, anything to share there then i'm again happy for for you to share if anyone would like to on clive um, I deal with uh, small companies who are seeking private in equity investment from mm -hmm. third party angel investment groups. And those third parties do give a lot of credibility and put premium on the founder's ability to win independent uh, credentials and awards. Mm -hmm. um, and those award submissions then can form part of their um fundraising activities mm -hmm. so it is uh for me it's a very in, important area yeah. uh, as part of due diligence for mm -hmm. fundraisers to give that sort of evidence thank you thanks clive and, and of course winning's fantastic but i always remember when i first joined gdb um some of you will remember paul rowe from creston reeves um he told a nice story um 
as an as an entrant and said that he he didn't realize how impactful it would be um going through the process of preparing an entry bringing in um the team to to discuss what they're doing and why they do it and he said it was quite a cathartic experience because it it helped them to refine process and mm -hmm. sense check what they were doing and why they were doing it um and that was before even looking at whether you were shortlisted let alone one so there were benefits in the process as, as well as obviously like Suzanne was saying the the euphoria of winning is obviously fantastic to bring the team together um and and obviously for all the other benefits of being able to um publicize to your customers or potential customers that you're an award-winning business yeah absolutely even and then when we we're even when we're working with clients to bring them through the process, actually, it really becomes enlightening on what, where the gaps are. And, oh, actually, well, we're not we're not actually doing that yet. Or we've got a plan, you know, and actually their, their plan gets accelerated quite quickly when they realise that unless they start providing some evidence for what they're doing, you know, what they want to achieve, that they're not going to be able to get in with those awards. And I completely agree with Clive. It, it, it's hugely impactful or, or, um, you know to, to prove your worth essentially mm -hmm. um and there's a limitation to that of course everyone has to do their due diligence around it but it's it's yeah hugely impactful on your worth yeah excellent has anyone got, else got any questions um or any comments they'd li like to make so i'm quite happy to um to wrap up a few minutes early if uh, if need can be can you confirm the dates for us sally yeah sure um so the um, the entry period is open now, um, and then the closing date is the 18th of November. So you've only got about six weeks. Um, then I think the finalists are announced on the 10th of February. Um, and then obviously the, the main event is on the 23rd of March um, down in Brighton at the Grand again. We had an amazing night there this year. Uh, those of you that were with us will confirm that, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> and so we're really, really looking forward to 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 the uh, evening we've got um Kerry Godleman as our celebrity host um, her picture is up on the website if you don't know who she is I, I know her best from um being um, Ricky Gervais's dead wife in Afterlife <laughs> <laughs> um but she's a, she's a great stand-up comic great and comic. um and she will be our first female presenter um Sally Phillips was supposed to have been our first female presenter this year but on the morning of the awards she tested positive for Covid so um, she wasn't able to come, unfortunately. However, fortunately, we ended up with a, a fantastic celebrity host um, who had us all rocking um, in our seats with laughter. So, um, yeah, absolutely brilliant night was had by all. Um, and, and that's the thing as well. I and mean, there's a whole process that's a winning, but what a great evening to celebrate with, yeah. with potential clients, with clients or with your team members um, and with your fellow GDB um, members, friends and and people from farther afield as well. It's not just a it's not just a GDB member event. Anybody can enter. So if you've got clients or customers that you think are doing something great, please spread the word. Get them entering. So if anyone has got any other comments, have you got anything else, Donna, that you'd like to add? Um, no, only don't don't think six weeks is a long time. It's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't started, start thinking about it. Have a look at the categories. I'm going to go and have a little look at the website as well now. Um, oh, and uh, and yeah, it's and uh, what we will say is actually, and we work with a lot of awards, is that Sally and the team make it really easy. So, you know, they make it easy to get their forms and to have a look at the criteria and all of those things. So which is really nice. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so I'd encourage you to have a look or like say, share it with your uh, with your contacts um, and see if there's something that can recognise them and think forward as well. Think, well, if the ceremony is next March, could we be doing with some nice PR around next March? You know, mm -hmm. actually it starts to plan into your PR and marketing calendar. For the year. We've got our first table booking this morning, um, which oh, wow. I'm quite surprised about, to be honest with you. Um, being a slightly smaller venue than we usually are, um, I told everyone we'd sell out last year, and I think they thought it was just a marketing ploy. We sold out, so um, <laughs> don't drag your feet, book your tables. <laughs> it's not oh, just a brilliant. marketing ploy. <laughs> brilliant. Oh, and no, and just good luck to everyone who's entering, and uh, enjoy it. Enjoy what it does for your business and, and brings your business Excellent. along. Excellent. So on behalf of everyone, Donna, a huge thank you for joining us today. Well, I really appreciate it. Um, and it's great to see you. Thank you to Ben as well for, for his help and putting this together you. today. Thank you all for joining us. Um, 
good luck with ent uh, your entries and I look forward to receiving them. And if you've got any questions, obviously just pick up the phone or drop us an email and um, me or one of the team will be able to come back to you and uh, help you where we can. Thanks very okay. much, everybody. Thanks, Take Thank care. You. Bye -bye. Take care. Have a good day. Thank you.